So left hand side your files, which files you want to import, up the top what you want to do with them, and in the center um, your images. So over here on the right hand side what I do is I rename all my files Yeah. and I do this in a special way. So if I click on which template I want to use, I've actually done a custom template. Okay, yep. So my custom template is Muzzer. Yep. So my name's Mo. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So Muzzer underscore, then I do the date, year, year, month, month, on okay. date, date. And then I just use the number of the camera. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And so that helps me keep, if you have a look, see all these files. It's easy, yeah. Yeah. Mine's still got a lot of them, so just got the number. Yeah. So yeah. that's it. So. so it makes everyone different, and yeah. I can take 9,999 files without getting duplicates yeah. in a day. Yeah. And I've never taken, oh, I've taken 30 and a half thousand. <laughs> it's not hard, trust me. Yeah. Well, yeah I've got, a, I've got a, um external one terabyte. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's filling up. Quick. It's filling yeah. up. <laughs> and this last thing is where do we want to import them? So. The destination, we can import them into a subfolder. So I'll select yeah. the folder. And again, I do, um, if you can see here, I, I do the date backwards, the 16th, okay, 11th, yep. 16th, yep. which was yesterday, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yes, sir. And then I just do concurry of the name where yeah. I'm, I'm just calling this test just so we can import it. Yeah. So actually, I'm not going to. Yeah, those are going to double up, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> what, what it'll do, I'll just add them. Yeah. And it'll import them. So, actually, let's get rid of that. So, import. And as you can see, if I come over here to Folders the folders, yeah. Yep. Um, it'll, it's, so, it's importing them all pretty quickly, which is good because they're already on there. Kind of, yeah. Copy. And now it's building previews of all the files. So, oh. yeah. And once it finishes importing, it'll show up here and previously imported. But uh, let's see if I can reset that. Right. So as an example, oops, what I usually do is just to start off, we're going to select which photos we want to use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So if I double click on an image, and what we can do is go sideways with a side arrow. Yep. And okay. it'll go through the images. So see the shortcuts are one, two, see? Yep. If I press one, it gives the star rating a one. If I press three, it gets the star rating a three. Or zero, it gets the star rating. So you've got all the way up to five. Okay. So I usually only use one, two, three. One, two, three. I go oh, backwards and forwards. Oh, no, I like it. I want more. Oh, yeah. And I keep going and I go, no, I don't want these. A horse images, yeah, that's pretty good. I rated that one before, but not anymore. Just down at one. So this is essentially what I'm doing is just going through and finding like the best photographs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I like yeah. those ones. Yeah. It's like I'm watching you. Yeah, I know. Very <laughs> angle. So yeah. So of course these ones have been edited earlier. So that's all you're doing is you're going yeah. through and selecting yeah. all the yeah. images that yeah. you want. Um, yeah, it's easy to do. yeah, and the great thing about it, if you write them down, you can come back in a year's time and go, oh, where are all my best photographs? Yeah. So for an example, see how you've got this rating that's filters yeah. here? Yeah. So if it's not showing, you'll have to come over here and just click yeah. filters off for flagged or rated. Yeah. So rated's there. Um, I can just select one or two and see all yeah. the yeah, two images. Yeah. Or if I, oops, T for toolbar. So you've got the two views here. So you've got your grid view. If, if I press three, all the three ones show up, which is good. Um, and if I press three again, they all show up, oh, yeah. which is good. So what we really want to do is go straight to the threes. Sometimes what I do is I go to the twos. And then I decide oh, yeah. which one's a better one, and I'll rate it up. I go, no, this one's actually a three yeah. instead of a two. Yeah. Yeah. So you might rate them up or down. It's up to you. But 
that's what I did. So this one should be three. That's yeah, it's pretty much quite easy once you know what. You're yeah, doing. this is like yeah, it's not a working way around the system. Yeah, yeah, and we're still in our library module. I mean, we can also go through and just say all of these these two images are the same, and so I selected them both. Come over here and just go. Let's add a little bit more contrast. Um, so that's a little bit, and that's a lot. Yeah. So that'll be more contrasting image. I'll just make it bigger by pressing the plus symbol. Okay. And that's just going to make it bigger. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is just a general overview. Yeah. So we can add more blacks and stuff like okay. that and highlights. Yeah. See, so that's that's why I wasn't sure how you'd like add the extra color. Yeah. Well, I'll show you that in the develop module because this mm -hmm. is just an overall. Yeah. Let's say you've underexposed oh, yeah. 20 photographs. It's quicker to select them all. Yeah. Um, all right. So there's our histogram. We've got our ISO, our shutter speed, um, our aperture. I didn't go to back to front. Well, there's our shutter speed <laughs> and our lens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is just other information which is shown selected too. All right. So what we want to do once we've I'll do is I'll just go unselect. Let's edit this force image here. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is once we've selected the image we want to edit, yeah. we can then go the, to the develop Develop module. one, yeah. Yeah, so if I click on the, the develop module, it opens up in the new module. And as you can see, uh, so things, the panels on the left and right change. So yeah. this is, again, organization, our history, um, and presets, you can actually, Lightroom actually comes with some presets. Okay. Like, see how these are Yeah, blocked. like the, the Septimia and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And see so how sort of like basic stuff on Septimia and stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. 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 So people like different ones. I generally don't use a lot of these presets. Yeah. Sometimes I'll use a black and white one. And I've got some other ones because people can actually make them okay, as well. Yeah. Or you can make them. Yeah. Yeah. But there's, there's heaps. You can do. Yeah. But I'll just start off with the basics. Um, what I'll do first is I'll close presets and open history and change that. All right. So the first thing I do is because I've got some settings. First yeah. thing I do is I come to white balance, and you can do a few different things with white balance, and mm -hmm. I'll show you that building later. It's probably so you know what white balance is? So it's when you've got a colour cast on your image. So see your image okay, is yeah. really yellow. Yeah. Or you've got maybe a lot of magenta or, or, something, yeah. or green and stuff like that. I want to find do those. So what we want to do is change our white balance. So straight up our white balance has some presets. Yeah. So we've, if I click on that, as shot, I can go to daylight or cloudy. So okay, yeah. let's just do daylight. See if we like it. That looks actually quite good. Um, or auto. Auto is actually nice as well. Yeah. But I'm thinking I'm liking the daylight one now, so I'll just take it back a bit. All right. So another way you can do it is use the white balance eyedropper tool or selector tool. And here you click on something that's fully grey. Yeah. Or something that's like white. White, yeah. Yeah. That's not going to be fully grey, that's going to have colours in it. Okay. That's not too bad, is it? Oh, it's pretty good. Yeah, so if I press Command Z, that undoes it, that's a shortcut. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so once you've got your white balance set, the next thing you want to do is skip all these tools to get down to whites and blacks. We'll come back to these yeah. tools in a second. So with our white tool, what I want to do is Select it and I can drag upwards or downwards okay. like that. So it's going to make it brighter and dark. Okay, yeah. And as a general rule, I like to hold down the, what have you got, an Alt key? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the Alt key on PC and you see how it goes black? Yeah. Because I've already got white selected and I drag it all the way up. And what I want to do is just get, see that tinge of That's red? Red, yeah. And see how the histogram is moving all the way to the right? Yeah. We just want to have that little bit of white just so we know we've got the right exposure. And then we do the same with the blacks. Okay. We drag the blacks all the way down. Yeah. So and while slide. I 
Yeah, so just yeah. like. It's a fiddly bit. Yeah. So, and there's a before and after key, which is this um, so, yeah. forward slash key. So that's that one. Oh, yeah. So if I hold down forward or press forward slash, it shows before and after. So mm -hmm. it's getting brighter. All right, so once we've set our whites and blacks, it doesn't really matter if the image is too bright or too dark. Yeah. Our next step is to come back here and just we'll just go down with exposure. Um, so we click the drag the exposure down a little bit. Yeah. I think just a little bit. We don't need too much. Um, then we can move our contrast. So exposure, for example, exposure is lighter, darker. darker. Yeah. I'll just yeah. undo that. Contrast is more contrast, less contrast. Yeah. So softer, harder kind of thing. Okay. So that's where you get your brighter colours and the contrast bit? Yeah, you yeah. do. Yeah. 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 Definitely. There's a few different ways to do it. Yeah. Alright, our highlights. For example, see how I've hovered over highlights? It's yeah. highlighted to zero. But see the histogram? Yep. It just shows you a representation of what it's going to affect. It does yeah. affect everything else, but it's but moving that. So if I drag the highlights down and up, see that? Yeah. These are the I'm high highlight yeah. colours. So maybe I could bring, it's actually pretty good where it is, but yeah. if you wanted to bring more detail in your space, you drag the highlights down. And then you do with the shadows and see how shadows are selected. Yeah. And it goes up and down. Okay. So I actually like the blues a bit brighter. Yeah. And the whites and blacks are already set. Yeah, so blues, blues brighter is always good on the, on, yeah, on the blue is, day. Yeah. Um, so they're your main settings and the exposure. So the exposure highlights shadows, whites, and blacks. So you can see the exposures in the middle. See how that's been yeah. selected. Um, the highlights, the shadows, which is down the okay. sand, the whites all the way up, the blacks all the way down. Yeah. So it just yeah. shows you what part what, of it. What? And you'll learn the yeah. histogram and see that on your camera for yeah. future and just go, oh, maybe I need to overexpose it more. With my camera. I just want to flick that airplane up, that's cold. Yeah. Just push the button, just push it. That's better. <laughs> Sorry, what is your name anyway? Kaliana. Kaliana Murray. Hey. <laughs> yeah. All right, so the next step here is we've got clarity, and clarity is a form of sharpness. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll go, well, you've always got the zoom tool, so I'll just yeah. click on him. Um, give it a second, it, it'll, it'll come into focus. Maybe it's out of focus, there you go. All right. <laughs> That's why I didn't select it. All right, so cl what clarity does, it gives you an overall contrast sharpening. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So you can just drag it up. I usually drag it up about 20, 30. And you can see when the image starts to break down too much. Oh, that's too much. And that's too little. Yeah. yeah. All right. The next thing we've got is vibrance and saturation. Mm -hmm. So vibrance is boosting the vibrance. Um, it works really well on portraits yeah. because it doesn't blow out the magentas exactly. and the oranges and stuff like that. Yeah. Like that. I'm not sure. It'll be that circle one. All right, so I'll give you an example. If I drag the vibrance all the way up, see how it's, it's yeah. it doesn't oversaturate. I mean the oranges and I mean yeah. they're basically skin so tones. Yeah, yeah, that's it, especially for horses. So. Yeah. I mean, us humans have pretty similar skin tones yeah. anyway, so I do that. But if I take the saturation all the way up, see how it kills it? Yeah, yeah. it's over. It's, it's definitely over. So yeah. that's where vibrance really helps. I mean, you do use both. Maybe you'll take the vibrance up a little bit yeah. and just boost the image and then just take your saturation just to, you know, yeah. five or ten or that's something okay. like that. So essentially... What we've done, so before and after, yeah, is we've really made our image pop. Up oh, there. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we want to do. So I find the next step is, let's edit another photograph, actually. Um, so let's go all our threes. What we'll do is we'll go to this, actually, we'll go to this house. Let's go to, because I've got another example of it here. Um, All right, cool. So hopefully we can hopefully we can get this back. All right. So I'll just minimise this. Mm -hmm. So that minimises the house. 
So with the house, what we're going to do is the same procedure again, do our white balance. But sometimes it might be a bit hard to do our white balance. And what we're looking for is like medium grey. Yeah. So straight away I'm going to use my white balance tool. Actually, I'll zoom in here. Let's do it on there because I think the sun on there is pretty similar to the sun. Yeah. So, and it looks like a grey as well. So if I click on there, it adjusts the white balance to what it was before and after. So that okay. So having correct white balance and correct and colours clever. and stuff is going to give more detail in yeah. your image. I'll zoom it out. Our next thing is is to do the whites. So what we want to do is drag the whites up and down. So hold down the Alt key, drag it all the way down. It's not quite in get there because I've gone all the way down to a minus 100. 100 yeah. And it's not getting it. But that's all right. That's just a step. Let's go to our blacks. Do we want... So I'm dragging it down. And we'll just... What, that, what that's called is clipping. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we're clipping the blacks, but we don't want to really clip any. And there we go. So we've done our whites and the blacks, and you can see... Yeah, the difference. The yeah. difference already. The next thing is we come up to exposure again. Um, so remember, whites and black, white balance, whites and blacks, then exposure. Mm -hmm. We drag our exposure down. We just want to make the exposure so the image looks good or how it was. So we don't, as you can see, we don't want mm -hmm. this all dark or the trees. It doesn't yeah, really sense what yep. it really is. And yeah, so you want to do that. You can do two things at once, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> you have to sometimes in this job. Yeah, I'm a bloke, it doesn't come natural. I don't know, some blokes are better at it than chicks. Yeah, so all right. So, the next thing is so see how the histograms spread right out. Yeah, so we can grab our contrast, so we can make our contrast harder or softer. Yeah, mm -hmm. but by making it softer, it brings the histogram in so it's usable. In a sense, yeah, we don't need to do it too much, um, and then we can move the highlights. So we can make it, the highlights brighter or darker. Yeah, but by making them darker, it's actually bringing detail. You don't want to do it too much because it's yeah, yeah, it starts to look them. flat. Yeah, and we can go to about there, and it's actually brought all the color. See the histogram off the yep. right, right hand side. Right. Yeah, um, the shadows. We can boost them or darken them. See how the door really opens up now. Yep. But we don't want that. It's starting to look unnatural. So, I mean, we could probably just give it a tiny boost. Yeah. I think that's all it needs. So we've pretty much gone through this process, but it's quite not quite there. Yeah. Um, so I think you can always come back through and I'm adjust your settings. Yes. So I'm just going to actually... A good little trick is hovering over. So see how the mouse has hovered over exposure. And if I go down arrow, see how it's getting dark. Yep. Up arrow. Now if I hold down shift and go down arrow, it does it in bigger scales. Okay. Yeah. So what I like to do sometimes is just go shift, and when I find something that I think's right, that's when I adjust that's things that's, yeah. without the shift. Um, contrast. We'll probably take that back up. Uh, so we've, I mean, we could play with this all day. Yeah. But the image looks a lot better. Better, yeah. Yeah, that'll be kind of for the next hour. <laughs> we'll probably even do it alone if you want. Yeah, that's good. So if I hold down my forward slash key or just press the forward slash key, it shows you the before and after. after. Yeah. I mean, it's not a bad save, but I do think this other image, yeah, is, was able to save better. So. Yeah. All right, cool. Of course, clarity, which is overall sharpening and stuff, which I don't tend to use much. Um, vibrance, we can pump this vibrance up a bit. You don't want to make them look too fake either. That's no, a hard that's thing. it, yeah. Because Even, I see so many of them that look... Yeah, well, I push my photographs all the time, but yeah. sometimes they're a bit over. Yeah. It's hard to bring them back without ruining stuff. See, so that is great. All right. You've got these other tools, so these are uh, general adjustments. It does adjustments awesome. to the whole image. And as we go down, we put our, for example, tone curve, um, which 
we, is does the same thing as those exposure and contrast. Stuff, yeah. You've got some presets here. You can adjust. I prefer not to use them much. I'll just undo that. Command Z. Um, if I click here, what you've got is your hue, saturation, and luminance. Mm -hmm. So your hue changes the colors. Course, yeah. Your saturation changes the saturation, of course. Of course yeah. The vibrance in the image. And the luminosity changes the tonal range. Okay. Yeah. So it's brighter, darker. Uh, so, yeah. um, it does look difficult. But what you can do, let's say, if I just click all, it just shows them all. So it just exactly. saves time, time doing yeah. it again. Let's say I wanted a blue sky. You can go in here and click on blue and drag blue up or drag blue down. Okay. Yeah. But you might know, I'll just undo that, you might know something's blue or maybe that's got that's a bit of yeah. aqua in it. So you've got this tool here called, uh, yeah, the yeah. point tool anyway. So if I click on that, and then come here. So it wants me to drag up or down. Okay. So if I drag up, see how it's automatically okay, selected, selected blue yep. and tidy bit of aqua and drag it down. Okay, so sorry. if you want to make our okay. skies more deep, we add a bit of saturation and then we come down and select the luminance and adjust our tonal ranges or our luminance. And if I drag it down, see how the sky gets more deep? deep yeah. yeah. So we can do that with every single thing on, on the okay, image. So cool. drag up and down, so greens, the brighter, darker, yeah. Yeah. So wherever you want. And then if they get too saturated, again, you can come here. and go, oh, my greens are too saturated. Click down. And maybe that's a bit much. But yeah, that's the um, general idea. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I, don't, I don't usually play around with it too much unless you really stuff a photograph. Yeah. And you say, oh, why is that like a purple, purple sky? Yeah. And then you can just change it like that. But generally, I just undo that. Yeah, and do oh, that. that's cool. And to get out of that, because you'll still have the tool selected. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you just click on there, and that's it's done. Unselected. So how are you handling this already? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah, it's just a matter of knowing what to do. And yeah. So, so split toning is quite similar to split toning is quite similar to your sepia yeah, or like your cenotypes and stuff top, like yeah. that. So what you can actually do is you can go in. Oops, I'm just trying to do that. What you actually do is you go in and you can adjust the things in two ways. Is by using your highlights or your shadows. Mm -hmm. So if I click here, I go in and choose a color. Let's say we want to do a sepia. So you can choose colors here or okay, you can choose one here. Yeah. So if I choose one there, okay, so and then right close right. it. But what I'm going to do is you can change the hue. Yeah. So see how that's, that's green. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's and right. it's only affecting the highlights and stuff mm -hmm. and the saturation. So how much do we actually want it? Do we want lots? Of sepia in those colors, yeah. It's still not turning it black and white, not, but yeah, you can turn it black and white back here. I'm just clicking on that, and then let's do the shadows. So, we don't want the shadows quite the same colors, we still want it to sepia. We'll go to this dull color, all right, mm -hmm. and then we can go to the shadow. So, the hue is already selected, and then we can adjust yep. how much you know, goes, yep. we want in the shadows. I mean, that's a pretty bad example, but. That's yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. does. And I'll just turn that one off just to save. Oh. All right. So I'm doing this all because I think you can handle it. Yeah, that's yeah. I said. It's just a matter of like, eh. Yeah. Some people just go, huh? Oh, what was that? <laughs> no, all no, right. It's not so the basics of it. That's pretty cool. The next thing is, is your sharpening. So sharpening is usually set on about 25 and masking down here. So what sharpening is about is sharpening the whole image together. So mm -hmm. let's zoom in. So I just click and zoom in here. So if I click and drag sharpening, see how sharp so everything it gets. Yeah. And down, what I like to do is hold down the Alt key again and yeah. it turns the image black and white. So the color is not annoying you how sharp something is. And I'll just drag it up. And without looking at that, numbers don't matter. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So I'll put it on about 70. The radius and detail played with these heaps, but I think these settings are great. 
and I just leave them where they are. Yeah. Yep. Um, you can actually hold down the alt key and it'll yeah. give you representation okay. of too much, too little, but Adobe's done well with those yeah. numbers. And the other thing is masking. So what masking is actually do is subtracting. So see every yep. everything I that's like white how they do that. is sharp yeah. and everything that's black is not getting sharper. Sharpen. Yeah. So I don't really want to do that. Zoom yeah. out again. I don't want to sharpen the sky. I don't want to sharpen this front facing that's board. Yeah. I don't really want to sharpen the concrete much. Yeah. So that's just an example. So and the more I drag it up, holding down the alt key. The less it gets sharpened. So, yeah. in effect, that's what you call edge sharpening. Okay. And now I'll drag it back. You could probably stick it somewhere around there, I think. That's 46. All right, the next one's a noise. Yeah, that one's reduction. the one that always gets me. I've actually got a little video I showed someone the other day. I think you did that as well. Yeah, that cool. Computer. So, noise, you've got two types of noise. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't really show you on these images because. You'll have more noise in dark areas yeah. than you'll have bright. So luminance noise is noise you get in. Um, it's just black and white noise, really. Yeah. And it'll be just crunchy pixels. Okay. So this will reduce the amount of noise. So you just drag it up a bit. Okay. And see how the image turns That's black and white. Yeah. And then you've got color noise. And um, you'll, what you'll have is you'll have red, green, and blue pixels, which yeah, all look out of that, place. Yeah. So you drag that up. Just a little bit. I mean, you just do it enough so it, like, we drag luminous noise up, up all the way, it'll make it really smooth mm -hmm. and take out the detail. Um, and color noise, you only need to drag them up oh, a little bit. Oh, yeah. I'll zoom back out. And next thing is lens corrections. Click on it. All right, so automatically my. Um, a Lightroom picks up what camera I've used oh, yeah. with the images. So these are actually not set. So what will happen is chromatic aberration, that's when you get green or blue oh, yeah. lines between the colors. You okay. don't get them so much in modern okay. cameras anymore, unless it's really contrasting. We used to get them in the old film yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And profile corrections, what that actually does. So I've defaulted my distortion to nothing. So you, they're both set at 100, mm -hmm. and so what you can do is every camera's got, or every lens has got vignetting around the side, oh, yeah. and also distortion, so this is Lyra, and see how it changes it is, so yeah. much? This is Lyra from adjusting for it. Okay. So that's going to make your image, in a sense, more flat, so the straight okay. fence. More, it's realistic to an image, but it's not realistic to, to the, the eye. eye. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes a bit of distortion helps. So. Yeah. Um, the vignetting, as you can see, it'll make the corners darker and brighter. Right. Yeah. So I usually keep mine on or around 100, which is default set to. Okay. And that just helps, you know, widen up the corners. Um, yep. Yeah. All right. Transform. Transform is pretty tricky. So what I'll do is I'll go to this image here and all right so this image hasn't been transformed so what's transform does is orientate your perspective like your, your verticals and your horizontals yeah, yep. okay. um, so we've got an off auto guided which I think is for this tool here mm -hmm. uh, so or level so level if I, these are just auto tools see how it automatically okay. corrects yep. it while I do it vertical and so it's looking for the, so yeah, it's going to make it, when you're looking at something straight. Yeah. So when you're photographing, you're not pointing your camera down yeah, or yeah. up. But if, if you are, it'll make the corrections for That's that. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah. And let's turn off. And then there's full. So full is just level and horizontal and vertical. Yeah. Um, but I'll show you a quick example of how to use this tool. It's pretty cool. So I don't even know the name. The guided up road. <laughs> right tool. All right. So what I can do is I click. I clicked on the tool. Yeah. I come over here and I look for a verti vertical thing. So I click here and you can see, see where I'm clicking. Yeah. And drag. So I'm still holding down the tool. Okay. And we drag it into there. 
So there's one. We actually need two of these to make a vertical. Well, yeah. Yeah. So I'll do the other with a window. Yeah. Usually I prefer something on the other side, yeah, but, but yeah. I could go for that, but I'm not trusting that one. Right. A little bit touchy. This is actually a great tool. It's only just come out in the last couple of months. Okay. Um, all right. So see what that's done? Yeah, it's sort of. Yeah, it's tilted good. and sort of. We can't trust this because it's a hundred year old building anyway. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And now we can, what we can do, so they're both going to be vertical. Now what we can do is we can do horizontals as well. So, so no doubt the poor old thing needs restocking. Yeah. <laughs> so I know all about that sort of stuff because the, the loads of house removalists oh, and those yeah, restocking. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Go home it. and ask him, what do you think of this one? Yeah. Could come in handy for it. Yeah. All right. It's good you got this zoom tool and you can find yeah. out exactly. So that's, I'll just escape out of that tool. I'll click back here. So that's like a before and after. Uh, yeah. Um, it it probably doesn't work as well on this image because it's yeah, you know, but a I know it's, 100 yeah. year old building, but when you've yeah. got perspectives that lean in or. Yeah. Yeah, it works really well. And the other thing you can do is you can constrain your crop. So if you drag, let's say you don't want to do it manually, so this is manually. Okay. So vertical, horizontal, you can do a little bit of rotating, blah, blah, blah. And click constrain crop and it just gets rid of those wide Sideways. areas. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of doing it the other way. Yeah. <laughs> so I know how to do the basic on cropping and, and stuff like that. Okay. So this isn't yeah. cropping. But just yeah, so you know. yeah. Um, oh, okay, so it's a little bit different. Yeah, I'll yeah. show you cropping yeah. later. Um, we've got all these tools up here, yeah. which are all yeah, brushes and stuff okay. like that. Okay, transform we've done, effects. This is just if you want to put vignetting in your image. And I hate vignetting. It doesn't look oh, real. Oh, like fisheye and that type of thing? Yeah, well, it's just putting dark around the yeah. edges or bright, and I hate it. Yeah. I mean, people use it because they can't take photographs. <laughs> um, <laughs> Undo that again. So you got your grain. So this is more of a an effect. See how it looks all grainy there? Yeah. That's more of an a like a film effect. And then you've got your dehaze. So if you've got a hazy image, yeah. you know, from an atmospheric perspective, good, yeah. I guess what they call it, you can drag your haze up and it gets rid of like all the haze. Okay. So undo that to see the difference. Yeah. And then you can go, of course, go the other way if it's too but it's, it's not a bad tool. No, oh, it seems quite yeah. good. And the last one's ca camera calibration. I mean, this is if you want to get right into Lightroom and profile your sensor for your yeah. camera. Um, they do have presets and stuff, and these are the different versions of Lightroom. So okay. The tools have changed That's over the years. Is, yeah. But, yeah, you don't need to change anything in these. So what we'll do is we'll nip straight up into our... Um, Cropping tools like our tools yeah, like, yeah. and the develop module, of course. So, crop tool, as you can see, we've got corners on it. Yeah. We can drag so that double, in. Yeah. We can drag from the top. top yeah. yeah, so now I'm going to do all that. Sort of we stuff. can hold down the Alt key. Remember this Alt key? Free flashes. Yeah, because I usually don't use that one. I usually the just Alt do it key, the other way. And it does it all oh. equally. Okay, cool. And then I, I can just one. drag it I'm over to yeah, where it fits. Yeah. Oh, I can. Double click in the center and it comes back to it. Like, yeah. it actually looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. The cool thing about the crop tool, remember we've got a heap of options. Yes. So, cool. constraint image, we can change our angle. Um, yeah. Let's say it's not straight. Let's undo that. Well, I'll just undo all these. Yeah. <laughs> we've got our aspect ratio is one to one. So, you know, that's yeah, square, exactly. obviously. Yeah. Um, eight by 10. And all these other ones that I've created a couple myself. You've also got a lock. So what the lock does is when I lock when it's locked, the ratio, the aspect ratio stays the same. Okay, yeah. When I unlock it, it can be you can do whatever I want with it. Anything you want, yeah. Like that. Cool. Beautiful. Alright, so I usually leave mine locked, just yeah, and just keep it the same. Unless I'm gonna go through and I'll just Something particular. Yes, uh, 16 by 9, that's TV format. Yeah. Or you've got square. But you keep them 
what you find over time, you should keep more the yeah, same exactly. ratio because when you hang them and put them three of them next to each other, yeah, you'll have a rectangle square, then you'll have a really <laughs> thin one, especially if you're doing panoramas, I guess. Yeah. So it's just an as shot. Right, so our next tool is our spot removal tool, and I'll show you what's good for that. Let's get out of the crop tool. Go find some sky. Alright, so this will be handy. Alright, so what our spot removal tool does, so if we come in here, we look around, can't find any dots. <laughs> So you know how you get spots and stuff? Yeah, for so yeah. yeah, there's a big one there. Yeah. So I can go click on the spot, removal tool. I can change the size here by dragging up or down. What I like to do is actually just change these square brackets to smaller and bigger. So mm -hmm. yep, square right. bracket Perfect. right makes it bigger, square bracket mm -hmm. left makes it smaller. Yep. Now I can't see that dot anymore. Okay. There. So all I do is I click on that. It finds a spot that's the same and just covers that up uh, so we can dress. Well, can I? Come yeah. On. Maybe it might show that better than this one. It's yeah. all like wavies. Yeah, no, that was just loading. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I don't know why, but I took photos yesterday and I had spots everywhere. Yeah. The light in his eyes good too. So you can, you can use it to fix general blemishes as well. So i just make a smaller square bracket and there and see how it's automatically oh, yeah. gone and done the thing. What you can actually do is you can tap on each one and you can drag and just say, oh, if it's not working, I can come over here, go like there, it'll pick that. So if you don't like that, you can go and drag it to somewhere similar, which is good. So when you've got a straight line and something goes That's over great. it, it works. You can drag both ends. Um, and the way to delete it is just select that one, if that's a delete key. Okay, yep. Or select this one over here, delete, so there they go. Okay. The next one is our red eye reduction. Yeah. Um, drag from the center of the eye, blah, blah, blah. Ah. So what it's going to do is just make the pupil black. Yeah, instead of red. See how it's done there, yeah. But it's a horrible tool. I don't use that at all. All right, so we've got our gradient tool. So see how... Pull this comes down. Yeah. So it's exactly the same as the basics, yeah, the basic tool. Mm -hmm. But that is general and this is local, so it's only going to do the one area. So if I hold down my, because the tool is selected, my space bar, and click, it's going to zoom out. Alright, so what a gradient tool is, is a gradient. So if I, how should we do this? Alright, if I click and drag at the side, let's say, see how it's too okay. bright? Yeah. Oops. If I click and drag, what it's doing is making the image, for this example, we're making it darker in there, yeah? Yeah. If I hover over it, give you an example, the actual feather is from, see how I want to hover over that? The feather is from this line to that, to that line. line. Yeah. So it goes from 100% to 0%. Yeah, okay. Which is good. Um, we can add in more contrast or highlights or, so, you know, maybe make it, oh, we've down exposed it up, which isn't working. Um, yeah, so you can just adjust all these tools. Oh. You can even add a bit of temperature or you know, warmer or lighter. Mm. Um, just remember, you don't just have to use the marquee tool, and you yeah. can do multiple marquees as well. With the marquee tool, you can adjust it by hovering over the center line and change the direction of it, yeah? Yeah. You can come to this line and you can drag the feather to make the feather bigger so it's not, up, yeah. it's, it's not as harsh anyway. I'll just get rid of these shadows. Beautiful. And we probably don't need to do that so much. All right, so let's close that and let's go to this next tool. It's called a radial tool. Mm -hmm. I actually don't use this much and it's pretty new. It's within the last probably six, eight months. It's actually really good. So what you can do is really focus on the horse's eye yeah. and you click from the center, it'll make a circle. And what we can do with that circle, let's just rotate it once we've done it. 
what we can do with this circle. So I don't want to change the exposure, so I double clicked on exposure, it's back to where it was. What I want to change is the clarity or the sharpness. Yep. So I want to create blur. And there's two things we can adjust, that's the clarity and the sharpness. Mm -hmm. So if we take the clarity down, see how and we take the sharpness yeah. down. So what that is creating is the blur around and then we can change the feather, like how much do we want it or how little. Mm -hmm. So feather bigger is always better because it just looks softer. Yeah. Um, we can make this bigger. It's actually probably too much at the moment. Let's just drag. Uh, let's say we've done it wrong, we can always invert it. So inside is blurry and outside. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, so that's a really cool tool. Yeah, um, it's a we can change, let's drag the exposure down so that's going to give us, see how big is that. Okay. So it, everything else is blurry. We can maybe change the contrast in the background, which we'll, we'll take it down and that's going to, yeah, maybe not. So that's the general rule. Yeah. yeah. And now if I click on the radial tool. See how like his eye looks really in focus. Yeah. And then I just do a before and after. It's just it's it, making that image yeah. pop, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's yeah. good. And we can do the same thing. So we can come here with the brush again and we can just brush on his eye like this. Mm -hmm. And then we can go, do we want it brighter or darker? We just want it to have that little okay. just use the arrows because it's quite fragile. And then this comes with a little bit of saturation just to make his eye. And if we're really keen, we can come down and add a bit, of, a bit more colour. So, I mean, we can change the colour of his eyes quite quickly. So, mm. see how it's got blue on it now? Yeah. I mean, it's not a good effect, but. Yeah, it's like it's reflecting the, the sky. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Let's undo that, that's nice. And the other thing we do, see with that brush, I'll just put yeah. it here. We go square bracket, it goes bigger and smaller. Mm -hmm. and if I hold down shift and square bracket, it's basically. Okay, yep. So that's okay. your amount of feather. Yeah. That was finished. No, oh, awesome. It's got to start to All right, so let's just say we want to export. What we can do is we can go back to, if I open this, Actually, before we export, what we can do, let's say we like this image and we want to apply it to these other two. So I'll just, I've clicked on that one and I'll shift click on this one. So we've got three selected. Yeah. Over here, you've got the sync tool. And this is going to sync all the settings from this horse That's to the other horses. Yeah. Yeah. And this image, yeah, the image. So when I click sync, all these settings show up. So with most images, you can just go select it everything and just don't select the crop yep. unless they're exactly the same and I'll just click synchronize and so what that has now done is images just changed um, see this synchronized settings thing mm -hmm. before and yep. after and we can go through and actually where's this radial tool and make sure if I click on the radial tool and just make sure it's in the right spot or you know, some of the dots we've, what was it called again? The spot removal tool. Just make sure the spot removal tool isn't on someone's ear, yeah, this yep. one, because <laughs> it's going to bugger it up. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so lastly, what we want to do is go and export the images, because mm -hmm. you import them into Lightroom, let's say as RAW. Oh, yeah. You want to export them as something else, for example. So we'll just go back to the library, we'll find the images that we want to get rid of, so we're not get rid of, export, and maybe put on Facebook oh, or, well, yeah, yeah, so I'll just scroll down here to the house, right. let's just go that one, so I've, I've selected my images, let's make that smaller, we maybe you want to export this one too, the one we've added to, mm -hmm. so remember before we imported, yeah, did, yeah. Uh, so now we're going to export, export. okay, so I'll just close these ones. So Lightroom gives you presets. Okay. And you can put presets the whole way through 
um, Lightroom just to help with exposures and yeah. syncing things. So, so really handy, it's a lot faster. Let's just go through these one by one. I'll just close it all just to save grace and confusion. Right, so export location. We can choose a specific folder or we can go same as original photo. Yeah. Because it's going to be, let's say, we're going to export it as a JPEG. Yeah. We can just put it in the same folder. Okay. Um, you've got all these other settings, but you're working on as you go. All right, file naming. Leave the file okay. name the same. We'll just close it again. Video, we're not doing video. Okay. File settings. This is quite important. So JPEG. So let's just export everything as JPEG. Okay. Yep. And let's just use the color space as... The OERGV, not a dot mm -hmm. Yeah. And the quality, so if we want to export and go and get them printed, you can easily go down to 80%. 80 okay. Um, so just go down to 80%. And if they're going into Facebook and stuff, you'll probably go down to 70 or yeah. something. Um, but yeah, if you've got. I would mark everything that I put on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make it light enough so you know it's there. Yeah. And in the center. The watermarks. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've had them stolen. Well, that's something that's going to happen. Yeah. And people are going to steal them. It's only found like, yeah, it's stolen because it ended up on Northern Territory newspaper. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's on Facebook. So yeah. They're legally allowed to do that. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, like, yeah. Yeah. Because um, you've already blogged it and published it, they're allowed yeah. to republish it. Yeah. All right. So you've got your images, image sizes. I mean, I've got mine set at two and a half thousand pixels, and that'll fix quite fit quite well wow. on Facebook and three hundred DPI, so it's fine. Um, you can just turn it off if you're yeah. not sure. Okay. That just means it's going to upload a bigger file. Oh yeah. Which your phone does automatically, and if you're on the computer, you've got plenty of bandwidth at home. But two and a half thousand pixels, good. Output sharpening. I mean, we did sharpening before, so we yes, don't generally need it. it. Metadata. Don't worry about that. Um, watermarking, so what I've done, this is actually a good little dialog box. What I've done is, see how I've created some presets? Presets, yeah. There? So Murray, dark left, dark right. So I'll give you an example. So if I click edit watermarks, it opens up a new thing with your exactly. image. And see, I've created this graphic in Photoshop. Yeah. Or you can actually um, change it to text okay. and just go copyright. Right there. Um, that that's automatically comes up there when you sign in. On yeah. my own, I'll write your name in. But what I do, I used to, because I've been doing photography for about 15 years, I used yeah. to really worry about it and think that having having copyright in the middle will stop people. Yeah. But it generally doesn't, and they'll just use it and repost them on Facebook. Yeah, and if they know how to take the watermark off. Well, that's the other thing. What, yeah. what I actually do now, and what has really helped me for the last 10 years, is putting my logo on. Yeah. And then people always see my photographs continuously. I don't care if they use them, where they yeah. use them, because um, I give all my photographs away for free as well. <laughs> as we but have what it, to do. What it does is it gets you work. Yeah. Yeah. In the long run, people just see yeah. this little thing. It's not intrusive. It's not a. It's not. Yeah, well, it's not up your bar. Some some of yeah. my images are used for WA tourism. Yeah. Okay. So it's a, they're done over in Peru. Yeah. So. Yeah, nice. they, they sell them off, and I've got nothing out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, you can always do it yourself. Too. Yeah. So these are just the general settings. So I've added my little logo, and, um, yeah. and then you can save your preset. So to use, I mean, sometimes, as I said, I've got dark ones, so I've got black writing. Yeah. And then I've got left or right. I don't generally put them on the top. I just go left or right. So most of them are on the right anyway, yeah. unless it's too obtrusive there. I'll just cancel out of that. So I've got my little things, Murray AC, left, right, dark. And your post-processing, don't change that. You don't really don't need, need to, to do, yeah. do nothing unless you want to go to export folder. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> and then I can click export. Yeah. And so what this is doing, I click export. It sends it all through. It sends it all through. So it'll export all three, three files, um, and it's taking a little bit of time. And then you can go through and do what, do what you want with them. The one yeah. thing I did miss is when you export, you 
add to this catalog, so yeah. it'll re add the images back to the catalog yeah. as JPEGs. Um, let's, let's, just, let's just go down and find this folder again. Oh, it's on the desktop. There it is. All right. So one of these will be see, there's our JPEG. Okay, yeah. We've got our file name down here. And so then we can either right click on it and show in folder and then we can use it in Facebook. Yeah. Or we can um, yeah, just maybe drag it into Facebook from the moment. Oh, Depends yeah. if it works here with that. Yeah. Right. But pretty much that's the basic overview and we've only used the um, fiber in the develop module. Yeah. And I must say, rating your images is so important. Yeah. Because I can, I can go back to uh, these images here of Orpheus Island a month back and go through all my twos and ones. There's no ones. So it, it's just so much quicker. Mm. Yeah. You haven't checked that out, check that out yet, have you? Oh, it's lovely. We were, yeah, uh, I knew it's quite good. 